Hello, everyone. It's time to take another little break from Enemy Zero and relax with a puzzle game. It'll be just you, me, and the cubes. So what we're looking at here is Kenji Ino's final console game, and you might notice it's on the Wii. So you might wonder, why are we skipping a generation? The last game we looked at was Real Sound on the Saturn. The reason is that after D2 was released on the Dreamcast, well, the game did not do so well in terms of sales. And it led to Kenji Ino deciding that maybe he was going to do something else, aside from video games. So Warp was dissolved, Ino made a new company called Super Warp, and in Super Warp, he really did not do anything in terms of video games. Rather, he and his crew made non-game-related applications. And he did that for a few years, until Nintendo unveiled the Wii. Eno said that when he saw the Wii Remote, that he was inspired to try to make another game that took advantage of that control scheme. So... Eno made a new company, FITO, F-Y-T-O, you can see it in the upper right. It stands for, stands for From Yellow to Orange. And uh, in FITO, Eno made this game, Yumi and the Cubes, which was published by Nintendo on WiiWare. This game did not have a physical release, and it was not released on any other system. The only way this was released was on WiiWare for the Wii. So let's get started and see what this game is all about. And as always, we are warned that we better be wearing the wrist strap. I mean, you don't want Nintendo to find out that you're not wearing it. Don't tell them, but I'm not wearing it. I bet Kenji Ino never wore the wrist strap either. But forget about that. We're looking at you, me, and the cubes. All right. So there are some faceless people. What are they all about? Well, maybe we'll find out in the tutorial. This game can be played with one player, two players, and it seems like it is mostly meant to be a two-player game, but I do not have a second player here, so we're going to have to go with one player. But first, let's look at the tutorial. The reason is that, unlike most of Kenji Ino's games, there's not much, uh, not much dialogue in here. It's not cinematic. Really, the only speech or, well, dialogue that, well, monologue that we actually see in this game is right here, in the tutorial, where QB tells us all about you, me, and the cubes, because it's all he does. It's all he ever does. So, I would not want to rob QB of this chance to be able to show all of you how to play the game. It's his meaning in life. I would never dream of doing that, QB. Because QB spends most of his time in the dark. The only time he ever actually gets to talk to anyone is when he tells them how to play this game. Alright, the game's all about cubes and fallows. Well, we know what one of those things are. Can you tell us about fallows, QB? Right, the victory conditions. So we have a 60 second time limit and we need five fallows, whatever those are. I'm sure QB will get around to telling us what those are anytime now. He's just making sure we're prepared. Mm hmm, time limit and number of fallows. But QB, what are fallows? All right, QB's gonna show us how it all goes. I'm not controlling this right now. All right, we flung two human beings onto the cube. Well, they're not humans, they're fallows, so they don't have all of the rights that human beings do, of course. That's why we get to use them for our amusement. Yeah. 
So we have to throw the phallos in pairs onto the cube, and the cube is not very steady. It will tilt one way and the other, depending on the weight distribution. Uh-oh. Yeah, one of them looks like they're about to fall off QB. You gonna do anything about that? He has nothing to hold on to. That's a smooth cube. Not even QB knows what's down there. But but we hear stories, QB, don't we? Of what's down there. Unfortunately, there was nothing we could do. That fallow had to die for the sake of the tutorial. And we lose five seconds when that happens. So we don't want them to fall off. We have our own self-interest in mind when, when we want to save the fallows. Yes, and once we have the, the proper number of phallos on the cube, then QB judges us. His gaze staring at us from the top of the screen as he considers how well we did. Good. Okay. Right, no one fell off during judging. Only that one fellow fell before, but we don't... We don't talk about him. We don't even remember that happened. He's probably still falling right now. Falling forever. All right, QB, tell us what the controls are. How are we gonna play this game? I am so ready, QB. Tell me how to play. I... I... You, I can't tell you how much I want to try to do this, QB. Please let me do it. Alright. I am going to, uh, birth Phallos in my Wiimote, which is kind of disgusting, but it's how we play the game. All right, so I'm going to put the Wiimote up near the microphone, so hopefully you can hear the sound of the Phallos being birthed. I am so ready, QB. I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. Ugh, filled with Phallos. Okay, I'm going to shake it. Not sure if you were able to hear that, but yeah, it made a sound and the Wiimote vibrated. Now, uh, I can feel the phallos crawling around inside the Wiimote. Okay, let's put him on the cube and I'm gonna fling him, making a flinging motion with the Wii Remote. Get him out of here! Get him out of my Wiimote! Get him onto the cube! That's where they belong. Alright, so this game is primarily pointer controls. I can't- oh man, QB, I can't wait so hard. I've been waiting so long, QB. Let me fling the phallos. Alright, I want to try to... want them to be- to be balanced. So let's see if we can do this. Okay. Try to put it maybe near the center, across from each other, and- oh. Okay, I did that part anyway. Now I want to fling him. Fling him out. Yep, QB, I'm ready to fling! Right, so don't whip your Wiimote into the TV. There's no benefit to doing, to doing that. Got it. All right. All right, I mean, they landed, but they uh, fell over, so that was not perfect. If it was perfect, they would have landed on their feet. And there is a reason that you might want to do that, as we'll see when we actually play. Alright, we can change our viewpoint by pressing the B button. And QB wistfully wonders if only we had a B button in real life to change people's views. I know what you mean, QB. I know exactly what you mean. All right, 
I'm just gonna press the B button to spin this around. I mean, technically, I'm not spinning anything around, except the camera. The cube is not really moving itself. Yep, I'm gonna fling some more Phallos. All right, I'm gonna shake the remote. I'm gonna fling them out, and that's how the game is played. All right, it's all up to me. Working without a net now. QB is done teaching me. Let's see if we can do it. All right, I've shaken it up. Gonna put them near the center. Fling them out. All right, they stand up, they're on their feet, but the cube, the cube is tipping. Get them balanced. All right, that was a perfect one, because you see that um, they had like hearts over their heads. So that was actually a real perfect fling when they have that little animation. Oh, tell me all about the Phallos QB. I'm curious about who these people are. Where do they come from? What are their hopes and dreams? What's their culture like, QB? Well, apparently not much, because all they really do with their lives is they wander around the cube. They will walk off by themselves, which is no good for anyone. Well, that's nice. They will try to help each other if they can. So while they're standing, off, standing up, they're not going to fall off. If they fall on, if they if they fall down, then they can slide off. But if they're standing up, then they're not in danger. And again, there is also another reason that we want them to, keep, to stay standing, which uh, we'll see when we actually get started. Oh, but everything just got completely messed up. Oh, there they go. There's nothing we can do to help them. QB looks on aghast. But there's nothing either of us could have done, QB. You can't blame yourself, QB. It was it was their fault. It was all their fault. That's right, QB. It was the Phallos that made the cube tilt too far. That's why everyone fell off. It's nothing nothing we did. We tried everything we could to help them, QB. All right, I'm gonna put six of them on here. Well, I, I hope none of them fall off, QB. I mean, that's the goal. All right, we have a time limit. Gotta try to do this quickly. Okay, gonna birth some Phallos and then gonna fling them into existence. Oh, they collided with each other. Let's get them. Okay, balance is a little better, and then fling two more, and I think that's gonna be good. Yeah. It's all thanks to you, QB. I couldn't have done it without you. An unusual birth, you say? Pale Phallos. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna hold the remote up so maybe you can hear this. Yeah, that was a different sound, QB. A little creepy, maybe. A -ab Abominations, QB. I did not realize that we were, uh... I didn't realize we were discriminating here. From, from one fallow to another. I mean... Aren't all fallow equal in the eyes of uh, eyes of their creator, which is this Wiimote that I'm holding? All right. All right, 
I'm still hearing the normal sound. Oh, there it is. Alright, I did hear the noise and the boom did not vibrate. So now I've got a pale fallow. Ew, it's in my Wiimote. I gotta get rid of it. Okay, Cubie, I'll do it. I'm doing it right now. I'm gonna throw this pale fallow onto the cube. All right, there it is. Hmm, the normal fallows cannot see the pale fallows at all. So they're sort of like the enemy. As we can see, the pale fallow has, has social problems. Doesn't get along with the other fallows. But, I mean, we do have to punish it, so we do have to knock it out. So, okay, it becomes visible. And at that point... We can hold it in place. And then we can crush it with another fallow. So, we cut short this pale fallow's short life by locking onto it. All right, got it. And fling. Oh, wait, I have to put the cursor back on it. Yeah, I sure did, QB. I sure kind of. Kind of killed that newborn fallow. I mean, I guess we have to do what we have to do, QB. I'm not even sure why we're here at all. Yeah, I see it, QB. We got two cubes combined. We haven't seen that before. So as it's saying here, you do have to have at least one fallow on each cube. So the total number of fallows is not the only thing that you need to meet. You also have to have at least one on each. Good. And there, there can and will be more than one cube. You want me to do it, QB? All right. I'll put eight phallus on the cubes. And we will we will exterminate any and all pale phallus that appear. As you told us, that is what we have to do, QB. And I believe you. I believe that you're telling me the truth, QB. I, I don't think you would lie to me. All right. Keep the thingy balanced. Oh, pale fallow. It's on the top cube. I'm gonna have to keep track of it. Oh no! All right, murdered that fallow. Now I gotta bounce these cubes. Why did I throw one right at the edge? I mean, oh, there are so many. There's so many fallow dying. I can't, I can't save them. I can't save them all. They're dying. Oh no, another pale fallow. That's not what I need right now. Oh, 
probably should not throw them right at the edge like that. Alright, well that was kind of a mess. I could have done better there, but at least I completed the tutorial. Oh, QB. You're always you'll always be with us in our hearts. So again, it does seem like the game is primarily made for two player, but I can only show one player. And that's what we're going to show. That tutorial is fairly lengthy, I know, but at least we got some good dialogue there out of QB. So as you can see, there are six levels, and there are six, well, stages per level. Um, I'm going to try 2-1, see what that's like, because I've completed uh, the first level, but I have not tried the second as of yet. So let's see how this goes. Game start. All right, it's a freeze cube, special kind of cube. I haven't seen that before. All right, let's see what this is like. All right, I don't know what the ice does. It looks like it's not moving, which is, that's a good thing. That seems like it's advantageous. Now you might notice the fallow from the previous, what I just did, they're still there. And they don't... They're not going to interfere in what's going on. Like, they don't count in terms of how many fallows are on the cube right now, or how it's going to tilt. The reason they're there is for scoring, which we'll see at the end of this. This frozen cube makes things really easy, because it's not moving. Uh, it, everything's just staying in place. Uh-oh, it's moving, it's moving. Okay, but no one fell over, I think. Some of them did not make it to their feet, which means... Oh no! They're falling off into the abyss, never to be seen again. Falling forever. I damn them to forever fall. You see, if they're not on their feet when I complete the level, if, they've, if they're prone, if they've fallen over, then they won't be able to make it into the sitting position in time. And they will fall, as you just saw. One of them fell off. Oh, I did it anyway, I guess. <laughs> but so many fallows are dying. They're dying right in front of me, because I'm not good enough. All right, final cube. Let's do this thing.
And that's why we want the phallus to not fall off, because if they maintain their balance on the cubes, if they're able to sit down and stay on the cubes, then at the end of the stage, they turn into birds and fly away, forever saved. They don't have to fall into the abyss. Unfortunately, the ones that we were not able to save, too late for them, they will forever be falling. Right. So, that's you, me, and the cubes. That seems to really be all there is to it, and, I mean, clearly the difficulty is going to ramp up as you go from levels 1 to 6. Most of that, most of that video, this video I know was the tutorial, because, you know, that's where really most of the personality of the game is, what QB has to say to us. Uh, I like the dialogue that QB has. Unfortunately, there isn't any more of it. And that's just how the game goes. We could go through each of these stages and find increasing uh, challenges. Like, for example, when I was in level 2-1, there was a special kind of cube, the Frozen Cube, that I had not seen in any of the level 1 stages. It seemed to make things easier, so I don't know why it was there. And we didn't really encounter a Pale Fallow as I was doing that. I assume the frequency of Pale Fallows will probably increase as we go up to level 6. But I think that's probably enough of this little look at you, me, and the cubes. Again, this was uh, Kenji Ino's final console game, released in 2009. He had uh, plans for additional games, additional console games, but this was the last one that he had released with his company From Yellow to Orange, and the only game, I believe the only game he made that was published by Nintendo. Could be wrong about that, maybe one of his early one, earlier ones were, but I think this was the only one. And again, the only platform this was released on was WiiWare. So, hey, if you have a Wii, if you can get online with it, then hey, maybe, maybe buy You, Me, and the Cubes. Check it out. It's a nice little puzzle game. Um, it makes good use of the Wii mode, I think. Um, so, I guess there's really not too much else to say about this, about you, me, and the cubes. Kenji Ino's final console game. So that's it with these Enemy Zero interludes. And that means there's just one more, one more thing to look at, and that is the final part of Enemy Zero. So, I hope you come back for the last part, the thrilling conclusion of Let's Play Enemy Zero. I'll see you then, and QB will hope to see you sometime as well. He'll forever hold out hope that someone else will be coming to see him and learn how to play You, Me, and the Cubes.